All right, now I want to go into discipline. Now, 30% of parents said that they would smack their child on the bum as a form of discipline. Scott, what did you think of this? Um, I think, I think we, we, again, we're looking at generational differences. Um, a lot of parents we have comment and say, well, I brought up and I was smacked on the bum and it was, and didn't do me any harm and it did possibly did me some good. And other, but now there's a sort of a bigger movement towards people saying, well, we need to um, discipline by using positive reinforcement, discussing issues with our children, helping them to understand what's wrong and actually working through it and having communication rather than just using the, the smack as the first port of call. Yeah, Anel? I agree completely. I think that reasoning should also always be the first sort of, like you said, port of call. Try and chat to the child, try and get them to understand what they did wrong so that you can talk to them. At the expense of maybe being quite controversial though, I do think that for very young children you cannot reason with them and sometimes a smack is not to hurt, it's an attention grabber. Mm -hmm. If your child is going towards a plug and you can see he's going to stick his finger in after you've told him five times don't do that, a light smack on the bum is going to get the attention and sort of just make sure that he thinks twice before he does that again. Yeah, now that's for very young children. Um, would, you, would you recommend a uh, light smack for older kids? Not at all. Okay. I think the minute that a child can, you can start reasoning with a child, that should, should completely, it should always just be to get attention, like I've said, and if you get, can get attention another way, even with very young children, go for that. Yeah, the thing, um, one of the dangers is that we, we do live in a fairly violent society, and for, for some of us, a light smack on the bum is kind of, we understand mm -hmm. what it is. For other people, it means striking a child with an object until they're bleeding, and that's obviously, um, a form of child abuse which could be punishable by the law um, so f we need to kind of understand that it's not just the way we think but the way other people think as well and the way other people sort of translate things like discipline into yeah. the home. Interpret a light Interpret smack. It, yeah. 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 Now how can this form of discipline, a, a, a smack to a child who you can reason with, how can that hinder um, their gr growth as a person, can it? Of course, I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to discipline our children. That really is, and discipline means teaching them how to do it the right way the next time. If you just smack a child, all they're going to learn is that that's how you handle any situation, with violence. Um, immediately, you know, they're going to be against anything you say because you've just hurt me. Now you're trying to tell me you're doing something that's good for me. I don't think so. So it's just completely counterproductive to what we're really trying to achieve with older children. And again, this because corporal punishment is, is, isn't allowed in the classroom, you want your child to be able to um, understand what, the, you know, what boundaries exist so that when they go into the classroom, they're not sort of saying, escaping and feeling that they're in you know, free place where they can just do what they want, but they understand that the teacher has authority as well and that they need to behave in the classroom as well as in the home. Mm -hmm. Make sure that everything is balanced. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that's, that's maybe how not to do uh, discipline, but Scott, what are what are some better ways to discipline our children? Um, I think communication is yeah. the most important thing. Just understanding, helping your child to understand that you, as parents, you set the the laws or the rules or the ground rules, whatever you want to call them, and that you have a framework of understanding that what is what what you expect from them, how, and also what they can expect from you, because it it gives them that position of trust if they know that there are rules, it helps them to understand that you're not going to be com fly off the handle at them and get really cross. Yeah. If, if, you're op you know, if you're chatting about things and they, they understand that you, um, they can predict your behavior as well, it makes them a little bit more comfortable and receptive to, to you telling them when something's wrong. Yeah. Is this hard for parents to do? I think it, it takes a little bit of practice. Um, and having said that, don't feel guilty when you get it wrong once or twice. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll probably you know, get to a stage where you are just going to lose it and scream at your child and not be the calm, reasoning parent you want to be. But if that's what we aim for most of the time, I think that's very good. It's a horrible feeling when that happens because you just feel like the worst person on earth for doing that. And you, just, you see the, t the tears and you kind of think, what have I done? I've broken my child. But um, I mean, just, but I think if you, do, if you do mess up, I think it's okay to go to your child afterwards and say, look, I'm sorry I shouted, I'm sorry I swore, I'm sorry I you know, said what I did, it wasn't, it wasn't right. And you can apologize to your child as well and that gives, that they understand it's a, not quite an equal, you're not quite an equal footing because you are the parent, but they also, 
they, it shows them that you respect them as well as, as individuals. Now there's some interesting swearing statistics. Um, should we be swearing in front of our kids? Does, does it matter? I think it does. Yeah. Um, I think if for nothing else it shows a sort of, um, when we come to anger management, just a sort of break in anger management, we need to be much more aware of what we present to our kids and ourselves. You know, it's not okay to swear at anyone um, and definitely not in front of kids. I can't. <laughs> I agree <laughs> to, to your point. I think, traffic. I think <laughs> no, I think I do. I do agree with um, that. It's not healthy to just have uh, completely blue words shooting around all over the place. But I think also kids are going to be exposed to it. So the schools generally they repeat this sort of no swearing rule. Um, I think if you're teaching your child to swear, you, they might they're going to get into trouble when they go into the classroom and do it in front of their classmates. But if you're walking down the road and you hear someone shouting at somebody else across the street, um, you know it's it's they're going to hear it wherever they go. So sometimes they'll come. Your child will pick up pick up on swearing and say it in the in the checkout line at the supermarket, which is kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> but I think that's also a rite of passage for most parents. And the important thing is just to say, well, we don't say that at home. Or we don't say this in, out in public. To make you make whatever rules you yeah. find acceptable. So set rules around swearing. It's not everyone. <laughs> just say whatever they want. <laughs> well, well, I find with, with siblings especially, um, they, can, they can get quite, not, they don't use swear words necessarily, but they might use a word like idiot, which is, uh, which is kind of loaded. It's, it's, it's quite a nasty word. It, can, it yeah, makes you feel sad for a little bit. So we don't, we don't, I don't allow my kids to call each other names. So name calling is out. So that's kind of in the same vein as, as swearing, but not quite. Mm -hmm. Do you allow your kids to swear? No. Okay. <laughs> but they don't. They tell me not to swear. Really? So. <laughs>